my wallet is sobbing. I can hear it. I can hear it in the hall now. It is breaking down, crying. It turns out that Attila, the arrogant so-and-so, he's got a fake hammer. Oh, a fake? Yeah. Whoa. As I say, dick. So welcome to episode 83 of the Your Allegiance podcast. We're into mid-September now, so less than two months to Legions Con. That's pretty exciting. Uh, this week we've got some listeners' questions for you. I put the shout out for listeners' questions. Um, I didn't mention on the show last week because we hadn't decided to do it yet. So probably should have because maybe uh, people are sensible and they just listen to the show or watch the show on YouTube um, and uh, didn't maybe see the questions I put on our different uh, platforms. So uh, apologies. So if you do have a listener question and you're just a listener and you don't uh, waste your time with all those social media things, then fire it in and we'll get to it next week for sure. Um, so, how are we doing, guys? How's your, how are you, Rich? I'm doing well, thank you, yes. Yeah. Um, I look slightly like a bit of a pin cushion. You see the blue oh, yeah. on my hand, uh, blue plaster on the arm. Uh, there was one there a minute ago. So, um, yeah, I went for a blood test earlier, so I got okay. pricked and all sorts of stuff. But, uh, yeah, apart from that, all sorts of good. Very good. And a nothing counts. worry test. It's They're doing a... Um, there's a, a private company in the UK working with the NHS. Ah. Um, and they've got almost 2 million volunteers now, and they're doing like, you know, just studies sort of thing. So, you know, if your blood shows this, you're more susceptible to this in later years, and they can give you like advice saying, oh, yeah, you know, you, you might want to get yourself checked for X, Y, or Z and all this sort of stuff. So, yeah. And if your blood shows this, you're more susceptible to buying customs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this man's this got is gonna be like, crack in his blood. What? <laughs> yeah. There's going to be just all these guys in white coats going, come here, come here, look at it, look. Never seen it that high on that level. Before. What's that level? Oh, it's toy collector. Ah. <laughs> and how are the cats, Rich? They, they are settling in extremely well. Oh, um, I love to hear it. Love both hear of it. them have the the Tilly the boy. Because uh, they've got the names wrong, but they recognise them now, so we have to stick to those. Yeah, the, the um, names are the wrong way around. Yeah, he's um <laughs> he's like a proper at- he's a proper attention horse. So he's straight over and looking for. Oh, okay. Stuff, and That's him and job. Kerry are bonded completely to the point he's he the last couple of nights he's just been lying on our bed before we put him away, sort of thing for the night, and he's just the vet bed's virtually vibrating. He's purring so loudly, sort of thing. Um, so, and so you, have the more time, is, you have more time to look at customs then because Kerry is, uh, you know, doesn't need to be holding your hand. This, is, she the, can, this uh, is the plan. Yeah, exactly. You can uh, pet the cat. Yeah. And, and then the little so and so, I sent you guys a picture earlier. The little so and so was on my side of the bed, tucked under the, the duvet, pushing oh, yeah, under yeah. the duvet. I've, like you I've, given up on, uh, I've given up on that, you know. <laughs> I just have to, I just have to be comfortable in the fact that I'm probably number one, but sometimes there's only a cat that's needed. <laughs> And the but no, one? they're selling in really well. Yeah, the Milo, the girls, not quite as cuddly, etc. But even she started purring around. She was purring by me earlier, sort of thing. And we'll come up every now and again, going a little bit of attention, and then off she goes. So. Oh yeah, she's 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 kind of working her way into the family, I guess. Yes, I think so. But well, they both seem to sell in really well. Yeah, so we're a very happy cat house household now. I love to hear it. Love to hear it. See, um, and Mal, how's the crack? Yeah, not too bad. Not too yeah. bad. Um. As I was just moaning, it's gone very wintry very quickly, which oh, as man. I get older and older, I uh, more and more I need to move to a warm, dry climate. It's I can't, we, I can't do yeah, the cold and the We wet. just had the summer switched off here, you know? Mm. We, we put, like, my kids, the, the two kids wanted to have, like, a pool party for their birthdays, even though their birthdays were in April, so we saved the birthdays for the summer holidays. And because his uh, Ben's friends were all away, uh, for a lot of the summer holidays, you know, various times overlapping with each other. And uh, eventually a few of them were available this week. So we managed to cram it in because then the day after, I think it was Saturday, the day after the temperatures just plummeted. We're, we were 11 degrees here today. That's 52 Ooh. in American. Didn't oh, get any higher than cold. 11 and a half. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was like jacket weather. What the heck? Well, there was there was hail today, so you know you've got <laughs> chunks of ice falling out of the sky. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? 
Yeah. Yeah. We, we, he of just looking at the temperature here. Yeah. So we were like 17, 18 Celsius all of last week, rain most of the last week, but it, you know, it wasn't too bad. And then, yeah, it was, it's like, I think 13 today, it meant to be 12 or 13 tomorrow. So it's yeah, noticeably we've, dropped here as well. Yeah, we've been shortchanged with the summer because we got no lead in. It just went like spring, summer, but like in July, way too late. And now it's got to September and it's like, ah, winter, you know, forget your autumn. Yeah, well, I don't like autumn, even though that's when I was born, yeah. but uh, I suppose it wasn't. I suppose it'd be winter really, wasn't it? But Yeah. yeah. I guess you're all back to school. We're back to school on Monday here. Um, we had some friends that were doing a, you know, a lot of people go on holidays the last week or two here because... Uh, a lot of other countries are gone back to school already, so the holidays might be a bit cheaper, more available, etc. And uh, yeah, we had friends that went to Germany or Austria in the mountains. Uh, and the weather is just, uh, they've just found out that their last day there is going to be snowing. Oh. Now they're quite high up, but yeah. it's like this time of the year, it's not supposed to, you know, ski season is another month or two away at least. Yeah. Uh, for the early season. Um, yeah. And. <laughs> They have no winter tires, no no clothes oh, appropriate. Man. Yeah. So I, I would just leave. As soon as I saw that yeah. forecast, I'd be like, right, sorry, yeah. kids. I uh, know I've cheated you out the last day of your holiday, but you don't want it. I'm telling you, you don't want it if you know what's coming. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I imagine it's nicer than when we get snow, which is just slush and slop within. And Mal, you went to see Beetlejuice, uh, I saw. Oh, I did, um, yes. Uh, saying uh, during the week that you went and you yes. enjoyed it. I did. Um I'm seeing a few, a few negative reviews, but everyone who I've... Well, eh, not true. I've seen a couple of people being like, mm, not sure it's as good. I I watched the first Is one it a good the day after. But it's enjoyable, yes. Yeah. yeah. For me, it hit all the notes you want it to hit. Whether the story was good or whether the, you know, perhaps it wasn't as coherent, maybe. I see, I disagree with that. But but yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it, for me, it had what I wanted from a Beetlejuice movie. Um, right. It was fun. That's cool. It's wacky, zany, you know. Uh, Michael Keaton being Michael Keaton and, and Beetlejuice is just fantastic as ever. So, yeah. I think Michael Worth Keaton is so good in, in everything that, you know, yeah. if you get him to reprise a character from from uh, when he did it, what was it? I guess 90s was Beetlejuice, not 80s, was it? Uh, yeah, late it was 80s 90s. maybe. Oh, was it? Okay, let's not uh, let's not yeah, embarrass yeah. ourselves here. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't know why I just uh, hung that round our necks. You know, <laughs> I asked my I uh, like my it. good lady wife. Uh, I was like, "Oh, she watched Beetlejuice, the original one, then because the new one's out." And um, I, I can't repeat the language on our show but that she used towards the idea of watching Beetlejuice. Apparently, she's not a fan of that one. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I, suppose, I think it's a great uh, film, but yeah, she's yeah. not. Yeah, I suppose it would have been before we met our our wives, so. Yeah, you, you just find out if they like the original or not. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. She's weird. She's too late like, for like divorce. Murray, <laughs> no. just like, well, she's not like Bill Murray films either. So like Groundhog Day, no. Scrooged, no. It's like ghost, <laughs> Ghostbusters, she'll just about tolerate. It's like, seriously. Wow. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, my, my wife has her tastes as well. Yeah, and there's certain films that uh, I watch that she hates. So, yeah. But we just don't watch them together then. Yeah, you just have to give up in that scenario. Um, yeah, I watched, because uh, she's doing a film module this year with, uh, she took a like an extra class where she's doing oh, film. Because awesome. um, she likes, you know, all that stuff as well. And uh, so we're watching films now that we normally watch series. Um, so we're trying to find stuff on Netflix so that the kids could watch at home, you know, for sure. Nearly everyone has Netflix or, you know, she'll find out when once the class starts next week. But... Um, for the moment, we're assuming most people have at Netflix. So, uh, a pursuit of happiness was on Netflix. The Will Smith one. I've not watched Quite a it. Good it one. sounded miserable. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a very good film, uh, and his performance is amazing. But yes, uh, you will. Uh, I, w- I was I was quite invested in in the fate of the lead character, but also, uh, yeah, quite. I don't know. Yeah, it it kind of made me sad. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Is, that, is that the one where he's like homeless or something but then gets yeah. a well paid job or... he's a salesman that basically invested a load of money in these uh, bone scanners um, and 
end up kind of struggling to sell them and then his life starts to fall apart and at the same time he's trying to get an internship to become a stockbroker and it kind of all that's a true story apparently based on a true story yeah, okay so um which is why it's so emotionally heavy yeah heavy that's it's just so and there's a little kid the whole time which is actually his real kid real life kid oh, um, yeah yeah Jaden. um that's right and who's now an adult, of course. So that's weird when you look up on IMDb, who's the kid? And you're like, oh, he's an adult because it's the film is from 20 years ago. Nearly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so the cute kid when all the bad things are happening to them, of course, is just, you know, devastating. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, good film. Uh, if you're, you know, good film in the kind of, you know, if you like watching kind of Oscar type films or, you know, these kind of critically acclaimed mm. films. Um, and it, it does have quite a high rating on uh, IMDb, so I suppose uh, um, that's kind of uh, reflective of the type of film it is. Um, yeah. Speaking of Oscar rated or Oscar type films, I got Kerry to watch The Green Book uh, the other oh, week. Oh, yeah. Which is a fabulous, fab- brilliant film. I mean, it won best film at the Oscars, sort of thing, and you can see why. Yeah. It's, I've seen it before, um, but yeah, Kerry loved it too. It's a really good film about it. True again, based on a true story about a black pianist who does a concert tour uh, down to the south of America when it, everything's still segregated. Oh wow! Uh, and the Green Book is a list of hotels that um, the black people are allowed to stay in. Oh, and where they can eat and all this sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, but the um, the guy that goes with him is like chauffeur sort of thing. Is this like boun- white bouncer from New York sort of thing? And they bond and yeah, an excellent film. Very good. Well, from films to something completely different, we have Mr. Trevor Williams and his Cosmic Lunchbox. So tell us first, Mal, Cosmic Legion's art on anything, um, and when it's Trevor Williams' photos, even better. Yeah, I, I, I actually, uh, I think it's this photo I got from uh, Legion's Con last year. So. Oh yeah, yeah, I got that yeah. one as well, yeah. The minute these sort of got announced, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And yeah. I got my order in like within minutes of him going, of them going live. So <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be epic. And it's funny because I was actually, I don't know why, but you know, you get one of these ideas in your head that oh, I'd be cool to have like a classic lunchbox to just use for storage or something. Um, so it was something I was looking for um, as well. But everything I've seen, I, I was like, hey, it's, it's cool, you know. And, but then the minute we're getting cosmic art, hell yeah, I'm right in there. That is yeah. Very cool. Can I check? Do all those figures come with it? Because they're obviously in the pictures. <laughs> oh, well, that's what I've paid for. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this going to be another Swig's bottle again? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, Trevor. And it does have the Cosmic Legions logo on it, which uh, means that it's, uh, actually sanctioned actually, as you yeah. said yeah yeah by the horseman so that's also very cool um it there's a pre-order up and um, you can get it here at the one six uh underscore shooter instagram page or uh, one six shooter on facebook uh, and you did post in the cabal and there's a google form that you fill out and you can paypal 36 dollars as a pre-order and you can pick it up at legions con uh, so that's a little discount for doing it that way and you guarantee your uh, your lunchbox. So yeah, I'll definitely be doing that. I, I, of course, meant to do it straight away and then got distracted to do something else and never got back to it until, of course, preparing for the show. And then I realized, oops. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, definitely a must get for me. And the nice thing about buying something like this at Legion's Con is when you put in your luggage, you can fill it with other stuff. This is exactly it what I thought. It doesn't technically perfect. take up space in the luggage. Nope. In fact, you know, might even be extra protection for resin parts. Yeah, in fact. yeah, yeah. A little bit of bubble wrap, yeah, uh, and put your parts in. So, absolutely perfect. Uh, so, uh, me and Mal will be getting one. You, Rich? No lunchbox, and not my thing. I don't feel the need to collect those. It's all absolutely awesome as this is. But it's not for me. Cool. Very good, and well done to Trevor. That's a nice little unique item. Great idea. Um, Right. Yeah, because yeah. it's um, it's always difficult to when you you know you're selling pictures and prints and stuff, um, it's always difficult to think of something else to kind of put it on that isn't just kind of a tacky like you know because of course you could get photo on everything, 
but what's going to sell and what's cool and what maybe is collector friendly and nostalgic. And I think a lot of collectors would remember kind of lunch boxes from the 80s. Yeah. That yeah. kind of stuff. And it's blue. So woohoo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's a woohoo, but yeah. <laughs> this is Trevor and it's blue. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh dear. That I'm was rich. Slow, by the way, huh? Trevor Rich. Did that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, we should get on to the main topic. Uh, this is going to come up in one of the questions, so uh, don't even need to say too much about it, but we think possibly figure obscura this weekend, uh, which would be interesting. If, and by the a time, time. Yeah, so we can talk about that on the actual question that it comes up on. And there's also the mythic, the Legion's Armory experience at Legion's Con is going to be revealed tonight as we record this. So you will already have heard it on Jeremy's show. I'm sure lots of people are tuning in tonight, uh, Wednesday. Um, so we're not even going to talk anything about it other than, uh, you know, it it's looks exciting. like <laughs> figures and stuff. Uh, you'll know what it is. We don't know what it is yet. So we're going to talk about it on next week's show and give our reaction and considered opinion. Uh, that that sounds fair. Sounds good to me. Sounds awesome. Got to keep that content right. coming. <laughs> Got it, yeah. I'm just, for I'm just trying to resist the uh, temptation to stay up tonight, but it's like, no, just catch it on replay yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah just yeah, get exactly. a decent night's kip. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, you'll see a post on the Cabal that will explain it all, and then you can go back and watch the, the stream when you have time. Um, but yeah, so thanks. Uh, that's nice. Little, I like when we get stuff to talk about because we've we've generated a lot of our own stuff to talk about over the last few weeks, which is cool as well. But it's also nice to get a, some something on a plate, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Let's go into listener questions. Radio. So the first question uh, comes from Chris James. Uh, pretty, he was pretty quick on the draw, so um, that's why he's first in line here. Uh, he says, This is for each of you. Uh, if the four horsemen were to start another Legion's line, what would you like them to do next? So, Mal, you're ready to go? Yeah, big time. I've kind of said it before. I would love six inch Wild West figures. Um, or what well, you know, Western, let's call it Wild West because yeah. you need it to be a bit more interesting than just like you know, the blacksmith and the <laughs> whatever the barkeep. Um, and I, and I was as I was thinking, barkeep, of, sorry, Mal, if there's a barkeep, we have to get a spittoon as well. That would be <laughs> well, a legal requirement. There you go, you could come, mm -hmm. you could get a bar set, couldn't you? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I uh, as I've sort of hinted out there, I do wonder how just a straight Western line would how interesting that would be in terms of characters. So maybe some sort of theming. And I went sort of, it could be sci-fi Wild West, but actually more fun, sort of some sort of horror theme. So you could have undead oh, cowboys, wow. undead, you know, demon cowboys, uh, werewolves could all come into it. Or, well, though, perhaps you could, um, you know, some of the Native American legends. So you've got not werewolves, skinwalkers and things skin like walkers, that. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you could actually make it quite compatible with the existing legions lines as well, and people could mix them up in however they wanted. I mean, they would anyway, but you know, you know. Um, failing that, um, pirates, a pirate theme would be great. Um, but again, I think you need to introduce fantasy element to that to make it a bit more interesting. And I'm thinking, uh, sort of the thing that was kind of coming to mind was some of the stuff you see in like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so you could have sea creatures or, you know, you've got the ghost pirates, but they've got like barnacles over them. Well, yeah, I knew, I knew as I was saying it, Richard liked the sea creatures idea, but it would be oh, really yeah. cool to get something like that and, you know, crab men and whatever else. So, uh, yeah, I think they're the two wild, uh, wild west, <laughs> the western theme would be my, my my big one, but pirates would be cool as well. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's a similar vibe, you know, yeah. um, would you, would it be kind of steampunk vibe you'd be going for there with with them, or would it be more classic? 
I think classic sort of thing. I think yeah. steampunk starts to creep into, which is why I say not maybe. maybe right. Yeah, yeah. And I think it'd be cool to have something completely different, something period. But then introduce that. That's why I went horror and or fantasy more than, you know, maybe a sci-fi. So, yeah. I guess I guess steampunk might work in a sort of a horror style thing as well, but oh yeah, totally. The, the idea of zombie and demon cowboys is amazing. Mal, you've sold me completely on that. Both your ideas, <laughs> be in fact, cool. are better than the two I've got listed. So yeah, <laughs> make Mal's, make Mal's. So samurai <laughs> Egyptian legions or or what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, yes, the first one is Eastern <laughs> legions. Um, which is samurai, strangely enough. People would be disappointed, you know, if you if you if you yeah. didn't come out with. Actually, I've not covered Egyptian stuff here, so I've let myself down badly. But um, that's okay. I haven't yeah. covered them either. Uh, so samurai, uh, Ashigaru, like the foot soldiers with the big round hats. Obviously, you can do all sorts of stuff with that. And again, you can have different races. You don't necessarily need to be a human. Although I was yeah. reminded of thinking ninjas, like horse, like Mongol horse archers, uh, Indian warriors on elephants, Pacific Island warriors, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It'd be quite cool. You could bring like yokai into it, couldn't you? Again, add that fantasy yes. element and have yeah. things like that. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, and I then one of mine touched. Oh, sorry. You carry on. I was going to say, I, re- I just finished watching Blue Eyed Samurai. And whilst that doesn't have, you know, doesn't have demons in it as such, um, although there is an episode that does something. <laughs> um, it, I must admit, when I was thinking of this, because I'd just been watching Blue Eyed Samurai, Samurai and Eastern, so sort of that era came to my mind as well. Some really cool looking characters you could have. Sorry, Rich, carry on. <laughs> no, no, my second one, I don't know how this would work, to be honest, but I, I've gone America's Legions, but it's nice. all different time periods, so it'd have to be some sort of time travel element to it oh, yeah. to make this well, work. Because it's really like, yeah. You know, They've got Jeremy doing the stories or, you know, in this supposed fictitious line. So, yeah. So, yeah, so you could have like the native North American tribes with the horses and all that sort of stuff. you got the Aztecs, Mayans. You can put the conquistadors in. There's somebody arriving and obviously threatening them. Um, you can even go down the cowboys route, which is what I put in mine as well, sort of thing, particularly if you're time hopping and that sort of stuff. Isn't this, um, um this is kind of reminding me it's not of course the same but figura obscura vibe where where you get different types of characters that kind of go together as one line because you wouldn't necessarily yes. put say headless horseman and uh, uh monkey king in the same no you wouldn't you right but, but you could have like your main characters your core characters that go through yeah. the the waves and having so you could get say i don't know say whatever your main character is, if he's in one wave where you've Some done Native it, American you, chief or something. That's it. Or, or, or he's a cowboy or, you know, a soldier yeah. of that time and in one, and then he's jumped into the next time and he's whatever there and that. So that'd be quite cool because you could get different versions of a character. All right, that man. Trying to yeah. So in in one yeah. time period, yeah, he's well, like he's like the boss, and in the other time period, he's just like you know the local butcher. Or quantum leap, <laughs> but it is basically quantum. Oh, quantum leap, <laughs> quantum leap legions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might be a rights issue, but I'm sure we can work around that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, well. See, this this is you know completely hypothetical. There is no license to be to be got for that. You know. But yeah, I really love the idea of like, yeah, Native American chief. And then, as you say, in the next one, all of a sudden he's a soldier in the Union Army or the Confederate Army or something. And yeah, just pinging around sort of thing. That would be amazing. Cool. Um, I've gone for um, if they make up their own superhero line. So it's a superhero line. That'd be cool. But like, you know, not infringing on any IP. So not making a Superman or whatever. But then inventing their own story, backstory. So, you know, like the boys obviously did, a, yeah. you know, that is a superhero line or it's a story, you know, it's not, the toy line isn't really a thing. I mean, they have a few, few figures, but, um, no, this would be literally a superhero story made up of, made up superheroes with particular powers and the horsemen yeah, design cool. the figures. So, it's superb. you know, yeah. it of course would be a very difficult sell for them in a way that because there's so many other established superhero lines, so possibly wouldn't make sense, but. You know, in a fantasy hypothetical world, 
I'd love to see their take even on just a few kind of uh, superhero type figures. Im- immediately what came to mind with that was, can you imagine the awesome capes and soft goods that C. Jessam could do for them as well? They'd yeah. be more simple than some of what he does now, but look incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, totally, yeah. Right, shall we move on? Um, yep. So this is still Chris. Um, so he has a couple, of, he has questions then for uh, directed at each of us. So Mal, with Legion's Con on the horizon and the Fodder Swap and Pop and Swap event, okay, <laughs> is that what it's called? Shoot. Um, in mind, are there specific cosmic pieces you'd be looking for? So, um. Not particularly specific ones, because I, I don't actually have loads of cosmic fodder. Um, I've got bits, but um, I was as I was thinking about this again, Svexian parts, I really don't have any of them. That'd yeah. be cool. Um, excuse I'd me. I'd say the most, uh, the most valuable parts in that scenario are the ones that generally you can't make as because of the articulated parts would be very yeah, valuable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'd hands. I'd love some sexy and hands yeah. to do things with. Um, and then outside of that, as much, uh, I, yeah, I seem to be lacking lower legs and feet for some reason. I must have used more of them on things to than anything else. Um, and uh, the things I think, unfortunately or fortunately, will be on the list for a lot of people is the cloth arms and legs and. Uh, leather gauntlets and things like that. In fact, they might be pretty impossible to get because I imagine a lot of people want to keep them for themselves anyway, but uh, they'd be cool. Kind of what You'd be surprised at this type of event because I, I didn't have fodder last year, but I bought a few pieces of money because it was kind of more informal thing. Um, there was parts that I was just going, holy crap, I need these. And other people were like, yeah, sure, I have loads of them. You know, so, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I think you just need to find your match, you know? Yeah. 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 But yeah. Um, so that, that's anything and yeah. everything really. Well, and cosmic I, wise. I don't know in cosmic if there's, a, if there's parts that are only on one figure would be few and far between now, but that would be, that would I think be something main to, one to be, check up. I think only a couple of them have belts that don't have the pads on the sides. Yeah, that might be the one that uh, is, and I can't think who it is who does have that, but yeah, someone does. And maybe female parts as well are, are a little bit, uh, yeah, if you're yeah. going to make female customs in cosmic, uh, there isn't as many options for figures because no. even one of the female cosmic, Callie, and she's basically a mythic build apart from, yeah, yeah, um, the yeah, so s- that's some pieces, yeah, Vorga parts would be good actually, yeah, I don't Vorga, have anything yeah. that I don't have any yeah. of her. Yeah. Four gets gone. That's what you need. I've, I've actually got a spare one of them that I'm working Ooh. on what to do with. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, Rich, if and when four horsemen do lizard men, how would you like them to be portrayed? Uh, and details, photos are. Oh, I'm just going to make myself awesome. comfortable. <laughs> be, to be honest. To be honest, I've gone pretty cold on the whole lizard man idea. So <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> right, and my question, sir. Um, I've talked about this at length. Lizards so are cold blooded, aren't they? they yes. Are. They are. Good point. Nobody would be surprised by these. I, I love this. I mean, they obviously can't do the warm aesthetic because that's IP protected, but this is the sort of this is the sort of look of my lizard men sort of thing. It's it's very primal. Um Lots of like weapons with like bone ends and that sort of stuff. Um, lots of bright colors. I mean, here you've got the greens, the blues, the reds, gold armor, uh, bone armor, all that sort of thing. And then, as I said before, different sizes. You have little skinks, for instance, like the top right picture, um, through to really big, meaty, brute scale sorts of lizards. Um, yeah, and just a, a variety of like face things so like the bottom left picture there for anyone that's watching on youtube the lizard's got a frilled neck piece so again that's just something a bit different that you could just put in one of them just to differentiate them a little bit uh so this is the sort of thing i would want yeah it's the vibe i mean of course they won't infringe on warhammer ip but the vibe you know there's there's no you can't put ip over a you know a lizard build but but there's probably just particular things you couldn't do So, and in fairness, I just I just Google searched lizard men, 
and obviously a war, load of Warhammer stuff comes up, yeah, but then a load of other things that, you, but they are, you, but, you know, they're obviously that similar sort of feel. So I must admit, I wrote answers for other people's questions as well. So I'll oh, yeah, you I think that, of course, chime in uh, if you have answers for, I think they've made a great start with the bodies they've produced for Thygar and, yeah. uh, and oh, yeah. you know, the, the, what they've done so far. Thraxian. Thraxians and even the, the then the uh, og- ogre troll, no ogre scale lizards are great body. I mean they've made lizards. There, oh yeah, right? yeah, Arachnor um, and uh, a Kragnar body and all Kragnar, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I I would want just really colourful, brightly coloured. Again, they've started quite well with oranges, bright greens, bright blues. I'd love them to carry that on. Maybe even more patterns on them than we've got at the moment. Um, and you could I even have like a rank system with the different colours, Mal. So you could have, you know, like the the warriors are blue, the mages are bright yellows or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So that sort of thing. System yeah. of some sort. That'd be cool. Um and I've I've gone I've said I'd quite like them to take a leaf out of the motor book. So what well, some with long necks, some with long arms, you know, the different like you said, the fanned. I think that'd be cool. And here's a question for you, Rich. What would you want the armor to look like? Would you want it to be knightly, you know, or, I mean, the, in no. a lot of the... I think that would work, but I think for me, the lizard men, the idea is the more primal sort of thing, so bone armour or, you know, like the Mayan-type sort of look to it. I mean, there's no reason why you can't have lizard knights, but I, I, I'd i want more basic primal sort of thing, almost like the Thraxian-type look, but for lizard men. It's funny because that's kind of how I think, I mean, my couple of savage crucible lizards as you know have sort of gone much more barbarian-esque <laughs> um you know i've put him in the uh and uh no just to be clear no barbarian-esque stuff, no. <laughs> well no i know you wouldn't but it's again it's yeah. that more prime it's that more primal armor isn't it that, yes uh, absolutely yeah cloth and leathers rather than and skins yeah. rather than uh, yeah it, in, in my head lizard men aren't going to be like uh you know, not advanced isn't the right word, but not the sort of society where they're going to wear fancy stuff and this sort of stuff. Yeah. It, it really is more, I can't use the word, but it's more primal stuff. It's like, you know, we've just come out of the forests. This is what we've got. You know, yeah. we're going to raid your village type thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, right. Let's get on to the next uh, questions. Yeah, that's for me. Um, he says pancakes or waffles. Uh, and then he also says, I can't wait to see you guys at Legion's Con and have some pints. Cheers, yeah, fellas. So that's see definitely Chris. absolutely reciprocated. Um, and what I'd like is a waffles pancake and then I'll feed it to the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Poor waffles. I know. Oh, I did. Oh, who's talking about the the gerbil? Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that's when you used to have a gerbil called pancake as well. I can't pick one <laughs> yeah. or the other. It's not fair. That's right. That's right. <laughs> maybe he maybe he remembered that, you know, because Chris is probably uh, more attentively listening to you than I am. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe that's what the little winky face is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's definitely for waffles, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I hadn't even thought. Anyway, about that. <laughs> let's move along, or we'll be here all night. Uh, Eugene, Eunuch, uh, Doctor Grim on in the Instas, uh, and his table is Doctor Drum's Customs Allegiance Con. So he says multi-part questions for each of you. Uh, so first for me, uh, he says, "What are your favorite customizing tools slash companies?" Uh, so for me. I took this as more of the stuff I use and rather than like the third party companies. Um, so I mostly use Pro Acryl Paint um, for, yeah, for many of the, you know, for most of the paint jobs. But I use a lot of contrast paint as well uh, for, you know, different effects. And when you need to get gradients, contrast paint can be good um, or, you know, for washes and stuff like that. Um, but you can use the, the pro here paints thin down for that as well but you know contrast paints can be more vibrant and just have the colors maybe that you want and um but there's so many good paint lines out now you know any of the new kind of vallejo so they have they have redone all their paint 
in the different uh, lines. They're all good. They're all pretty much of a level. You've heard guys like Eric Miller uh, who love them. So, I mean, you know, they're not bad if people like Eric are like them. Uh, the two thin coats, that's the guy that used to be um, yeah, one of the Rose. brand managers, uh, kind of painters for Warhammer on their YouTube, uh, Duncan Rhodes. So his paints are basically the Citadel paints, but uh, a little bit uh, in dropper bottles, uh, more matte kind of finish and it does them on triads and stuff like this. So you get the, you know, three similar shades and you can, you know, use them in that kind of layering method to create really cool paint jobs. So uh, the new Army Painter paints, the Fanatic line, that's also of the same level. I've heard people rave about them. I haven't had them myself, but, you know. And then as an alternative to contrast paints is Army Painter Speed Paint. Also good. I found them a little bit smelly. I just got a few to try. A little bit smelly and a little bit different to use the contrast paint. Uh, so I would just have to learn how to use them a bit. Um, so I didn't find them enough better than contrast paint because they are a bit cheaper to bother with that. So I just, because I had enough contrast paints, I just decided to continue that road. Um, but I think if you were starting off, uh, get the speed paints because they're cheaper than the contrast paints and they're they're just as good, I think. Um, the, for metals, very specifically Vallejo metal color, they come in these 60 milliliter bottles, so bigger. They're the best metals. They're not great for dry brushing because they're thin, but for everything else, amazing, amazing. Um, the metals for dry brushing, you know, the Citadel or uh, Brogrill metals are good or the Vallejo metals are good for dry brushing, but these metal colors are amazing. One coat coverage for metal. The only problem is they don't have a very good gold. So that, that kind of sucks. But hey. Um, so then uh, for priming, I used to use uh, rattle cans, but it was really, even with the Citadel ones, you know, would often get uh, kind of, uh, uh, kind of a little bit of texture on the surface and stuff or whatever. It was just a bit annoying, so I switched to the airbrush a surface primer from Vallejo. It works perfectly. Um, and I also use the, the Vallejo varnish or, or the AK Interactive varnish is really good. Um, and they have a gloss and a matte varnish that's really good through the airbrush as well. And the thing about those is they mostly don't uh, do anything to the colours when you varnish them. I find sometimes if you use rattle can varnish, you can get a good or a bad surprise <laughs> after varnishing them. So, um, so that's that. So that's mostly the tools. I've loads of other stuff. I mean, the airbrush we use a harder and steam bake airbrush, uh, you know, but you don't need to use airbrush. I just like using it at this stage and you can do things a bit quicker, a bit easier, but there's nothing with the airbrush you can't really do with, uh, um, with the paintbrush, unless you're really, really, really uh, good with the airbrush, you know. I do That's think, and again, it, it probably does come with getting better and better with it. I do think you can perhaps get smoother blends. You with can, an airbrush. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, possibly or quick, quicker, smoother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and maybe some of the things I do with the fluorescent paints are a lot easier with than with the brush because. I do them sometimes with the brush and it takes ages because their coverage on the fluorescence is terrible. Um, but with the airbrush, it's better because it uh, you can do thinner, quicker layers with the airbrush. Um, right. And then the next part of that question was artistic inspirations for customizing. Um, so I do like realistic uh, more than kind of cartoon style. Um, I always have. Probably I grew up in uh, the town I come from in Ireland is like a medieval town. So we have an old castle, an old abbey town. town it's a walled town, still has a lot of the town walls. So all of that kind of stuff was in my childhood. You get a lot of that in the UK as well. I guess you guys would be familiar with that. Uh, so I think uh, that's where I probably definitely got the love for the kind of, you know, knights and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, back when I was growing up. It was all around me, so, you know. And then for Cosmic, I uh, just loved bright colours, 80s sci-fi, you know, definitely that's where. The likes of the running man, you know, that's the kind of colour palette I'm thinking of. Uh, 
for and then maybe more cartoonish with the cosmic then you know um any comments on that boys or should i continue the rest of he asks a similar question of us, I think, later okay. on. Anyway, so okay. we'll answer cool. it then. <laughs> um, and then favourite piece you've created and purchased. So the favourite piece I did is probably this one, the walrus. Uh, just because it kind of came together so nicely and kind of looked, uh, I, I think this is the custom I did that looks like it could be a figure that you might buy more than a custom. Um, so that's why I really like it and it just came together nicely um, it was the first time I painted those cloth parts so that was kind of cool as well to kind of do that uh, and it has this really cool uh, torso piece from Anthony as well as well as the head from Blantry Dog with the walrus works really well and the blunderbuss from Wolf King so named after Nate Strong I think and I think Eric Lebron has this piece I traded him that for one of his customs. Um, so that's my favorite uh, custom that I did and purchased. Um, I haven't purchased a lot of custom stuff because they do customs, but I did get some customs in trades like that cosmic one off Eric. Uh, Dennis Derby gift gifted me his Jade Knight. So uh, I have a Jade Knight. It's really cool. Uh, and I've got heads from Eugene, a uh, samurai head that I need to put on a custom blaze bear. I've got a Svexian head from him. And Curtis, I've got a green orc head that actually is on an orc on my shelf. So um, they're the kind of ones that I uh, have at the tip of my tongue. So they're the ones I went for. Right, Mal. Give my, I, I'll give my... Boys, a break now after this question. Uh, what type of customs are your favorite to see made? Do you want me to so, do it in parts? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll split it into, yeah, I'll split yeah. it into mythics. I love seeing the creatures that people make, um, whether they're the fuzzy little creatures or gory things, horror themed things. Not gory, I actually put. I like sort of the gruesome, sinister ones, although I'm not too fussed about them. I mean, loads of gore on them. Um, but some there's some. I mean, uh, Leland uh, does some incredible, weird creatures. Uh, I love a lot of the stuff he does. Uh, Lenny Kingpin uh, does a load of really cool ones. There's all sorts out there. Um, and cosmic anything and everything. I just love seeing what people come up with. Um, You're Jeremy, on a cosmic dwarf kick now, aren't you? Uh, well, yeah. There's some amazing dwarf ones coming out from different people. Noah Pratt, uh, Mark Calvo. Are the first ones that come to mind, but there's a few, been a few. Um, I like what Jeremy just did recently, where he took the legs off the uh, spawn and uh, stuck them. When he started, he showed the picture of him cutting bits off. I was like, oh, that's yeah, real serious customizing going on. One of my favorite cosmic customs is from actually a while ago now, uh, from pre last year's Legions con. Is Curtis. Did um, a Darth Maul kind of character? Um, oh right, using I remember a, that. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. sort of robotic legs that Wolf was... King teased, and then I don't think yeah. they ever released. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I really hope they do release those legs at some point because they were awesome. awesome. But yeah. was that the one that yeah. was uh, that he did really glossy? Then uh, was that that one, or was that a different? Oh, one? I can't remember. Can't remember. Oh, and of course. Okay. But we're a bit biased with this one. His recent Paradigm and uh, oh yeah, was our, incredible. Our, our, <laughs> it was yeah. next level. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So yeah, I think anything, everything, cosmic. Cool and the weird, and yeah, the better uh, for mythic <laughs> or the cuter. <laughs> uh, Noah and Eugene, I think, have posted their um, some paint jobs on the custom pieces we sent them. Oh, they look which we will get to maybe next week. Um, yeah. yeah. Didn't have chance to fit it in this week, so they are. Don't worry about that, boys. We have, uh, we love what you've done, and uh, we will definitely showcase them as soon as we get a slot in the show. Um, right, and then the next part of the question: If you could have any piece commissioned from a customizer, and it can't be a specific, a Legion specific characters. So like a custom Legion Star Wars character or something, what would you like to see? 
I think I then, uh, based on my answer to the first one, I have to go with uh, something cowboy, but, uh, Western related, don't I? So either parts to make a, a cowboy, a full cowboy out of, yeah. I don't know, maybe boots and whatever. Or or if a full custom, so maybe Wyatt Earp would be cool. Because uh, I do yeah. love that story. That cool. One of my favourite yeah. films as well. But, yeah. I wonder or is Wyatt Earp Day. something... Oh, the, oh from... Uh, Again, from the same story, yeah, he was, yeah. was White Earp's friend, so, yeah, the, the OK Corral and all that sort of thing. I wonder if they're ever going to be, or are they public domain? Probably not. I don't know. I mean, they were real soon. people, could be weren't soon. they? So it might assume they're real people, yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah, it might. Have at it. It might not work yeah. like that, yeah, yeah. There you go. Could put it on the obscure list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what are your... Artistic inspirations for your customizing. There you go. Sorry, I didn't see that. Nah, yeah, that is well. cool. Um, anything and, and your favorite then. piece created and customized as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so en- inspiration is anything and everything. I'll watch. I mean, a lot of Games Workshop stuff. I watch sort of the minis they produce, and the, as but as well as watching people paint them will uh, give me ideas. Watching. Um, Beetlejuice, there's a, I don't want to say in case it's a bit of a spoiler, it was a nice little cameo, but the the makeup they give to some of the dead people, you start going, oh, that'd be quite cool to try and replicate that on their head or something like that. I've watched a lot <laughs> of sci-fi, fantasy and horror in my time. So, you know, you you, you call back to some of that, you look, watch some of that. Um, yeah. And then, and uh, uh, something that I've stopped watching, I should probably watch more of again, is anime and manga. I used to watch loads of that. So Akira is one of my all-time favourites, uh, but then I've never sort of moved away from that. And then on to favourite piece of created and customised. So again, I've split it to Mythic and Cosmic. And he's not finished. <laughs> so this guy would probably what? be my favourite. No, come on. Yeah, he's, I know, I was, he's lacking. I need a, an ultramarine blue skirt piece to give him cover his bum and then he'd be ah, finished um be arranged, surely well this is yeah i need oh this is the that. famous shield isn't it yeah yeah with the golden knob shield uh it's meant to be a warhammer <laughs> but you know with rich and john who needs enemies uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah he he, he would pro- and will probably once he's finished be my favorite but as things stand as a completed one it was actually one of the first ones I did with like a kit. It was the flayer set that uh, Jeremy oh, yeah. uh, created and they sold on Legion Shop. And I kind of just. Awesome. Copied. It is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy's paint app. Well, I say copied, did my version and added like bone. Inspired by. Maybe. Yeah. I'm thinking he might get an upgrade, although hmm, it might not work with the feet. He might get an upgrade when the Thraxians come out and then he can have more wooden parts. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. In it cosmic. Just been off Bri Fighters. <laughs> Ooh, I like <laughs> Bri Fighters. In Cosmic, I got this head from a meal at the I Legion's always have Con. one nearby, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Sorry, Mal. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. No, no, no. I got, I got this head from uh, a meal at uh, Legion's Con. Oh, that's, I, I love that's awesome head, yeah. My little salty dog. I remember when cool you posted stuff. that. Yeah just because it was an epic bit of repainting all the armour. And, of course, stupidly, I picked yellow. But I think it came out really well. And then from uh, cutting bits up and, you know, doing something a bit fun, my uh, Geiger-inspired custom I really like. Uh, that is, I really uh, like the paint app. I mean, the one thing I'd like really to go good. back and do is do something a bit different here with the pipes because they're not finished very well give the secrets away they're not finished very well uh where they go into the belt so i'd like to perhaps go back and revisit him at some point well as you're uh, not yeah. selling them um well no, no that's it. that's it's, fine it's, yeah it's from you, my don't own need to, you don't need to need to worry uh about people knowing the flaws <laughs> that's it. Or, so, yeah. or or perceived flaws i should say i'm sure they're well, they're not well, really flaws no, you're just being it, self-critical well. I like I like to make sure things. That's the one thing I like to try and do with my customs is make sure they're they're finished, and you could move them around as much as you could with a, you know, a normal figure. I try and finish them like that. 
Yeah, excellent. Um, right, Rich. As someone that purchases a lot of custom pieces, shh, don't tell Mrs. Jones. Uh, what stands out to you as something that makes you want to go? I want it. For me, it's um, it's a race or even a character type that I love. So, and that we don't have official ones for generally. Um, so, lizard men, head sculpts, for instance, werewolves. Um, is that, that sort of is stuff. that these pictures you sent me? No, not yet. No, no. Just oh. Jump in ahead, John. Jump in ahead. Hang Sorry. on. <laughs> Oops. Um, or then also something that maybe allow me to create a new faction. Um, so we've had lots of shark heads from people recently. Uh, we've had lots of uh, cybernetic cephalopod heads. Go, John. Go pictures. Keep going. No, that's uh, no. Keep going. No, that's all I have on this one, I think. Oh, this one. There we yeah. go. Yeah. So this sort of thing, for instance, um, it's just a, a gaggle of cephalopod heads um, and like the cybernetic one. So I've already got a cybernetic cephalopod fac- or affiliation rather planned out in Cosmics. Um, I'm looking to pick up some lovely painted versions of a lot of these, hopefully the heads at Legion's Con. Who does um, these particular ones or is this, is this a mixture? It's a mixture. So it's... Um, see GN Art is on a few of them there yeah he so G, GN Art is one that there's a lot of stuff for um, Wolf King for Wolf King and this sort of stuff yeah and he's worked with um, I know Josh is it Josh Brown Customs sell them uh, and somebody else Rocket Fist Customs I think are the two people that sell these um, and they sort of worked with him over them sort of thing so you know you've got Got one there with like an eye thing and a breathe mask. and So it's that sort of thing that makes me go, wow. You know, I think I saw one of these originally. And went, oh, brilliant. I can have a, a a cosmic cephalopod. And then it was like, oh, I can another one. Oh, can I another one? Oh, can I? And then all of a sudden I got an entire faction planned out um, with enemies for them and all this. Sort of, these are the bad guys. In it. And then, you know, some good guys, them to fight and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, something that something that makes me think, right, okay, I can make a little faction with that. Like I've got a, a cosmic faction with three spider people in, you know, just, I wouldn't have thought that, but the spider heads sort of shone out. It was like, yeah, they're really cool actually. And then what can I do with them? So that's, um, that's advice to the, to the, uh, custom makers or the custom peacemakers is, is, you know, do, do a kind of a group of, of things that go together. In order to no, maximize. my wallet can't take it. But yes, if you want to sell to me, then yeah, in order to maximize your business from rich, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's it's if I see something that I can, I've written here like see the bio sort of thing. So as soon as I see a head, it's like yeah, I know what I'm going to do with that. Um, and it won't necessarily be I know the exact body or whatever, but I I just the way my brain works is that I'll instant I'll see something and go yeah, that's going to be that sort of character, and I'm going to do that with him. Um. Right. And then and something, and then lastly, something that will stand out in the collection. And if you go back to the first picture in this set, John, that one. So this is right. possibly my all-time favourite 3D sculpt out there. It's a My Action Figure Customs uh, one. It's called the Warlord. And I think I've got three or four different painted versions of this. I've got one that matches up with Scaphoid. Um, got one that's on a Gladiator, which is for sale on the Jones One Two Three Four. If anyone's interested. Um, but it's just it's just a different take. So it's it's a zombie. You can see the sort of flesh coming yeah. off the chin and that sort of stuff. But at the same time, it's like really dark look with just you know the visor with just the little eye holes and the horns and that sort of thing. And you know, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that's really going to stand out on my shelf. Whatever body I put it on, that's going to stand out. So that's again, that's something that I look for. It's something that gives you the, like the wow factor and like, yeah, I'll be able to spot that at a distance. And the next part of the question is: Are you? Is there any pieces you have regretted not purchasing yeah. or just yes, there are, out on? There are two, um, and they're the next two it's pictures. Not many. So, no, no, I bought a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was my point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my action figure customs just before I got into the customizing side of things, did um, these? Uh, I think they were, yeah, they're Sebadon sculpts, and it was a range of Templar heads, um, and they re-released one where he's got the beard. Uh, which I've got and is a great head, but there's this 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 like arrogant smirk that this one's got, and yeah, they, they never the re-released it. I kept asking yeah. whenever they did a poll, going, "Who wants to see what re-released?" And like, me and um, uh, Joe from the Enablers, um, the two of us kept 
asking them to re-release this one and they didn't. So this is one I kick myself for. Um, and then if you go on to the next one, John. Yeah, sure. Uh, there you so go. this one prop is masters. a prop master's head that they designed for Mer- Merplay. I don't know if people remember Merplay. Oh, it was yeah. quite big in the scene for a while and then just vanished um, into thin air sort of thing. But he did it. Aren't his match. Yes, he did it as a, you can't sell it to anybody else. So I just want you to design this for me sort of thing. Um, and it's got like the horns, like, like a peeled skin face mask and this sort of stuff. Uh, and I desperately wanted to use it as a fallen angel um, in my display, but I contacted his email and his email was like, no, we can't sell it. You know, it was exclusive to Merplay sort of thing. So, um, yeah, those are the two, the only two really that I, I kept myself on the backside, but I didn't buy them sooner. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, if you could only go to a few tables at Legion's Con this year, who would you say are the must go for to you, for you personally? And we have more picks for these, don't we? We do. Can I just, I'll say straight from the off that I'm, I'm trying to keep this relatively short, unusually yeah. for me. Um, so there are an awful lot more tables that I won't mention that I will definitely go to. And I know me, I will almost certainly buy stuff from as well, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, this is not a, you know, this is just a few things. So these are a couple of future past customs figures from last year. Um, like, I, I don't think they were selling them and they may not well be selling them this year, sort of thing, but they were in the, uh, the, the far, the back room sort of thing last year. Um, just incredible paint jobs on them. That that screaming undead zombie Egyptian style thing on the right. And, yeah, you know, on the, the left, you've got the, I guess it's meant to be skeletal, all that sort of thing, because they had a lot of Motu-inspired stuff yeah. um, with the, the skulls coming out on the chain. You know, just jaw-dropping. The skulls on the chain are awesome. Yeah, just jaw-dropping figures. Um, so, yeah, I'm very much looking t- to see what they've got. Um, part of me is hoping they're not selling, because I will almost certainly end up buying something if they are, because it's so good. Um, but that's one of them. If you go on to the next one, John. So, on the left, this is uh, Dirk Nagel, Dirk Designs. Um, Dirk was just down the, the aisle from us last year, uh, and he just had some bonkers pieces. So these three here are the three that I bought from him, the three painted ones I bought from him. So you've got this weird, like, alien sea creature one uh, on the top left there, and that's that fits very well on a cosmic body. Um, i just got to decide on a colour scheme for the... I'm going to use it on a sentry, so I've got to decide on the colour scheme to go with that. Um, Incredibly fragile, bless him. He was he was like wrapping them up in like you know different bits, going like be careful with these and this sort of stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of spiky bits and stuff. There is, yes. Getting that out, take a photograph earlier. It was just like, oh my god, don't break it, don't break it, don't break it. <laughs> um, then the bottom left, there's a, a tree man, and I think I've, I think I've seen somebody else with this. I was not sure if it's Dirk's own design, but again, it's just a really cool tree man sculpt that I didn't see anywhere else. Painted it really well, and then there's like a, an undead. Day of the Dead type, you know, Cinco de Mayo, whatever it is. Um, sorry if I've insulted anyone that that pronunciation, but that sort of head as well. So he's just got some really unique stuff. So I'll definitely be going to Dirk. Uh, six uh, on the I right remember, hand. What I remember from Dirk last year, apart from his awesome stuff, was his his head's rack was about three feet tall. It was that? yes, it was massive. Yeah. And he had two, didn't he? he? Didn't have one painted one and one unpainted stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, right. and um, then you've got Blaze here on the right, and then Blaze yeah. on the right. Yeah, you can tell by the background that they're Blaze. He, he likes taking them against this sort of thing. So I will definitely be visiting Blaze to buy something from him. Um, yeah. Just some awesome stuff. I mean that that top right sculpt is just bonkers. Brain. Um, so I'll be getting one of those at Legion's Con, be it from Blaze or somebody else. I will be buying a painted one of those if people have got them because it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, so Blaze. Um, the picture on the left hand side here is Brian C. I love Brian's stuff because it it's just bonkers and bonkers works for me. Um, the 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 top left one here is a mantis shrimp. So if you ever see mantis yeah. shrimps, they're like really nasty predators, but they're really ornate thing. And he's got an Svexian body. Um, and I've been eyeing that one up on his eBay store for about two years. And then when he put it on the Svexian, it's like I can finally buy one now. I know how to use it. Yeah. Um, he does some awesome. So the two top ones in the middle there are like uh, just grunge sci-fi sort of things. So there's a helmet, quite alien-esque, I guess, uh, in terms of that. And there's like a robot head next to it. Um, then he did this awesome, like, I think it's like meant to be Carpathian or that sort of area, knight helmet, 
with a, the long chain mail underneath. Um, that's really cool. Um, and then below, he's got the bonkers stuff, right? Really bonkers stuff. So you've got a skate head on the middle one. So again, my my underwater faction. Uh, then there's a catfish, the one on the right, um, which is that's just, yeah. I think it's, it might be Wells catfish. It's just amazing. And then just a really weird helmet on the left there. So Brian is definitely somebody's uh, table I'll be going to. Um, the pictures on the right of Borderland Horde who aren't too far from us at all, um, which is a good and bad. So there's like a in a pharaoh Egyptian style thing in space on the top left there. It's like a Sphinx type head, but a cosmic version of that. That's going to be part of my uh, Templars of Doom. Um, then they've got this really cool little salamander mage set. So there's the torso, the head, and the pauldrons. Um, I'm hoping someone's got a painted set on a figure there because that might break my don't buy any painted custom figures rule. Um, yeah. And then the three on the right-hand side, the far right, are all cybernetic sea creatures. Uh, <laughs> hint, they may be the enemies of the um, of the cephalopods. Uh, the the hammerhead sal- shark, a swordfish, and the shark. The salamander dude actually fits really well with um, what we were looking at from the Warhammer stuff. It does. He? It fits yeah. really well within it, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and it's designed the, uh, for a 2.0 body as well, so it's designed for the smaller sort of body. So, yeah. I think that look at that would be really cool, yeah. actually. It, I, I, love the I really like the sword shark. Fish. Yeah. Oh, I like the robot, the robot sword shark. That's my cool. favorite there. Yeah. yeah. Might have to try and get one of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right. That's your. That was it for the pictures. And then very, very quickly. Uh, yeah. Very, very quickly. Here's all the other tables at least. <laughs> yeah, <No>. yeah. <laughs> That's why I said at the start, there's people that I won't mention that I'll buy stuff from. So Noah, I, want, I didn't get anything from Noah last year. I haven't got a couple of things from him the year before. Um, but I really particularly love his like human flesh tones that he does. He's so I want to try and get. So yeah. So, yeah. So I want to try and get one of uh, one of his human flesh tone heads. Uh, Immortal Collections. Uh, Carlo and Tristan are both awesome. It's going to be bankrupt because we're with them, aren't we? So, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but That'd they've always, always got a real cool collection of like quirky heads and some cool soft goods as well. Um, Detour Customs, Steph Spires again. You know, I'm going to watch out for flying goblins with his catapults and that sort of stuff. Let's <laughs> see what he's got. Uh, and then lastly, Art, who's on the far end of, he can't oh, be yeah. any further away from us, I don't think, where he is this year in the Legion's Con. But again, just. Really dynamic displays, constantly changing up his display and so fabulous painted pieces. So, but as I said, there'll be other people I will buy from. Yeah, the list and, is too long. and we're we're gonna, you know, do a few episodes in the run up to Legion's Con, obviously with uh, with people that we want to talk to, and of course we won't get to everyone either. Um, we're definitely going to do a few people that, of the people around us because we have a kind of a, a thing going on with this uh, first alliance. Um, so. If there's anyone in particular you'd like us to get on that you maybe don't think will be on another show, especially, uh, shout it out to us. Uh, and of course, we're going to try and pick a few of the ones that we want to feature. No, no pressure on me then, John, as the booker. If someone asks me if it's a random yeah, person. Well, I mean, if they, <laughs> they're not paying us to have them on, you know, if, if it doesn't, if they're not able to make it on or if the scheduling doesn't work, that's one thing or another. But, you know, we, we might, you know, kind of, in our ignorance, just pass over somebody and then somebody tells us, oh, no, you should definitely speak to them. That was strange. Well, you know, I'll just be having the trauma of like people speaking on their phones and with no microphones and uh, having to (laughs) sort that out. For my own OCD, you know, I'm sure the listener doesn't While While playing the guitar. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just yeah, a side busking, but I can answer all the questions. And there's like oh, you know, yeah, there's one yeah, man yeah. band things with the symbols go in and everything. <laughs> right. Um, are we on to Kevin Boots then? I think then? we are. Right. We're, we're, we're going slower than I thought. So uh, we've got to get a move on here uh, without shortchanging the questions, of course. Uh, or else it'll be another listener's questions episode next week. <laughs> Um, so Kevin M. Boots, um, he says, what are you looking, first, there's a couple of questions here. So the first one is, what are you looking forward to when you make it to the States? So for me, friendly people, for the most part, uh, friendly, uh, whether it's real or fake, I don't care, friendly is good. And uh, English, people speaking English, <laughs> and speaking English without any guilt. 
Now, I know there's other places you can do that, but <laughs> in my situation, not yeah, not common. I have you. to do so much talking in languages that I'm not very good at, or that break my brain trying to be good at. That uh, just relaxing my brain and speaking English to everything is uh, very easy. Very much looking forward to. But that's my two main things. I, I hope you cover some some more uh, substantive stuff than that, boys. Well, I'm looking forward to going to the liquor store with you two and seeing if I can ba- break my time last year about how long it takes me to pick beer. We just have to go at like lunchtime or something. <laughs> um, and I'm also looking forward to eating in the pub in the in the hotel again, which is really sad, but the food was really nice in there. See, I'm looking forward funny. to that. It's funny because food is what I've said. I've sort of said, problem with the location of the hotel is... One of the things I look forward to about visiting the States is trying the food that I can't necessarily get over here. Uh, uh, so, but of course, because the location makes it difficult. Um, so outside of, and time makes it difficult to do some of these things you would do as, oh, I'm in the US. This isn't something we can do in the UK. Um, so it's kind of it's seeing the people again as ever, isn't it? And the people, yeah. our friends that, that we've made through yeah. the community. Um, but yeah, if I can convince someone to take me to uh, Panda Express and Jersey Mike's again, that would be a win. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the Jersey Mike's is a given. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mention Pretty some of the change. obvious things. Obviously, obviously, yeah. it's taken for granted. The main thing that at least yes, it's gone is hanging out, yeah. hanging out with the people. Yeah, yeah, America sure. specifically is what I was uh, yeah, thinking. Yeah, about. yeah. Well, that's that's what I sort of say about the food. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, American hugs have been another one for me. Oh yeah, they don't seem to have any boundaries with regards to hugs, which is oh, yeah. both a good and bad thing. Um, but mainly good. Had a few so drinks. I'm looking forward to the hugs. I'm looking forward to the hugs. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't go. Well, you should come over here because Rich, they'll be kissing you and all sorts. You know, <laughs> no boundaries here. You know. One of the first jobs, like, it, uh, this is not criticism, one of the first jobs I worked over here is years ago now, nearly 20 years ago. And there was a French guy, he came in every morning and there was about 20 people in the office, he went around to everyone's desk and shook their hand before he sat down. <laughs> you now we probably I, lost, I don't know how many hours a, a year exactly. work That's because what that of this. <laughs> but my first week there, I felt the most welcome person ever because this guy who turned out to be like just a kind of IT guy, I thought he was someone important, uh, was shaking my hand every morning. Amazing. IT we, guys are important, Mal, just to clarify that statement from you. No, but like, I thought he was <laughs> like, you know, the, the deputy managing director or something, you know, the way he was going on. We're important when something breaks, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Otherwise they try to get rid of you. Uh, I was an IT <laughs> person as well, so, you know, at, the, at that point, so just so you know. Yeah. Whereas I'm a total Luddite, so yeah. Yeah. If your IT breaks, don't ask me. <laughs> but you're sitting on a podcast, speaking into a microphone, looking at a screen, so you're not that bad. And I haven't hit the microphone yet this week. <laughs> at one point, oh. it, the whole thing came away from the table, but luckily I was on mute at that point. So that was, okay. that was fine. I was able to set that up again. A bit before we started recording, but I, I, I'm i not going to give that <laughs> to that. Now that's getting <laughs> extreme, John. <laughs> Don't touch the mic. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, of course... Uh, you know, just to set the route, you know, like the kid, you know, don't misbehave now when, when, when your granny comes. You know. <laughs> granny will be here in five minutes. You know, tuck in your shirt. Yeah, hey, don't right. ask the microphone whacking out of the way first. There we go. So we've covered uh, what we're looking forward to in America. Yes, yes. Keep us on track, John. Keep um, us on track. <laughs> what I'm not looking forward to is that it's the day after the election I'm arriving. I know. Uh, yeah. Without getting into the the whole thing, it doesn't, and and in a way, the 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 result doesn't depend on what that's going to be like. It, I think either result is just going to be, it's, it's going to change a little bit the atmosphere. So yeah, yeah. I think unfortunately, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, which unreleased figure are you looking forward to most? Um, so anyone got what do you got for that, Mel? Have you mythic. got Mythic and a Cosmic? Uh, yeah, I have. Of course I have. Mythic, Dwarf Builder, and or Atlas 2.0. And oh, he's got, he's got two of... Uh, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> it's me. It has to, don't I? Um, he's got a two-pack and then another figure. And another one, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 
And uh, Cosmic, it's Kern Ray all the way. I cannot wait to get that. Kern figure. Ray all the way. Rich, what you got? Uh, this Pitar, in terms of mythics. I'm slightly yeah, biased. That would be a little full we circle moment up for on the stage of them, but he's that such a cool looking thing. figure. I can't wait to yeah, get him. Yeah, the third. yeah and um, <laughs> and the Cosmics is probably going to be, is it Korg, the uh, Simeon in the yeah, space suit they the revealed suit, recently? Yeah. My favourite Cosmic figure. Without a doubt, so I can't wait to get that in hand. Brilliant. Um, so I did have the dwarf two pack as well. Oh, here we go. One, <laughs> one. <laughs> but it, it, as Mal has already mentioned it, I could, I could maybe pick another one. Um, so let's go for the two percoli because oh, that's yes. something different. Yeah, very. Cool. And something that's uh, you know, there's going to be other possibilities with the two percoli. And for cosmic, uh, I went with Antophilies. Uh, which is the yeah. uh, the buzz off <clears throat> tribute? Yeah, uh, there's lots of them there. That whole wave, yeah. I'm still buzzing yeah. off it. The high lore as well. Oh, hey, fun. Fun. No, a little bit of no an fun. underrated one. No pun intended with the buzzing off it. <laughs> you could uh, Sorry, I, had that I missed it. My wallet is sobbing. <laughs> I, can it, I can hear it in the hall now. It is breaking down, crying. <laughs> I saw I saw it was the wrong button and I still just said, oh, that's going to be funny. Yeah, yeah. Press that. It'll work. It'll work. <laughs> It'll work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. Besides lizard men, so you just knew that's what you'd say, Rich, so you had to put in a disclaimer. But when someone's saying besides lizard men, it means you need to shut up about them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of race people would you are not like, like to one of the t-shirts the I'm getting made? <laughs> I'm sure they will. So besides the other men, what kind of race would you introduce to the lines? So I'll go with a proper race of cat people with specific lore and everything and different That'd type of be cats. Cool. Now I know we do have like Balam and then obviously a few other uh, reuses of that head, um, including Kai Pacha, but just a specific race of cat people. It's almost like a little Thundercats faction, but not Thundercats. Uh, within legions, you know, so different, you know, like a mancoon type head, uh, you know, uh, maybe a lion, maybe a tiger, maybe a cheetah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah excellent. Yeah, yeah. Rich, what you got? Uh, mine would be a werebeast snake faction. <laughs> no, not snake men, werebeasts. So obviously <laughs> werewolves. Get rid- and, uh, yeah. But like okay. were tigers, you know, were all sorts of other stuff, you know, any sort of animal that you can turn into a big fanged thing, then I'd, I'd love that. And would they be wearing armor? Hey, <laughs> some, some would, and some would just be brutes and just naked as the day they were turned. <laughs> Very good. Well, did we take your answer, Mal, or? No, um, um, I've gone back to my original first, you know, in, if it was comedy, it'd be a callback, crustacean people. So the fishes, again, yeah, Excellent. one that I know Richard loves. Yeah. But I think that would be a really cool faction to see I actually think fish people. I think specifically I'd like the kind of more shellfish type fish. Uh, I think because you don't see much yes. of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, of course, give me fish men. I'm, I'm down as well. You know, different types. Like we saw the couple of the ones Brian C had there or the Borderland uh, yeah. uh, horde heads. But uh, yeah. Crustaceans are just awesome, you know, yep, the, the shell, shell dudes. Cosmic, it's robots. Right. Again, I know Richard oh, really on that. More yeah. robots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you really need robots. Or cyborgs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't think of one for Cosmic, actually. I just, uh, I got focused. But you could put the cat people in space. That's Yeah, that's totally. yeah. Aqu- totally. Yeah, aquatic aliens. There we go. That's yeah. Cosmic sorted. <laughs> The best thing about Cosmic is you can <laughs> yeah. just you can just put any type in a spacesuit. Exactly that, isn't it? Yeah. You know? yeah. Of course you can do the, the figure as well, but you could just put the you know, like that cog guy you were talking about from the recent one. I mean it's a simian, but it's the spacesuit with the pair of hands. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> had a moment there. Just uh I, I really whoa, wouldn't, whoa. Uh, oh, John, that, sa- that sound has to be edited. <laughs> he opened kept, the wrong he, thing, woke, yeah. he opened the wrong tab on the computer <laughs> there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he went into the private incognito tabs or whatever they are. Wouldn't it be cool if the next I mean it's a little way off, I imagine now, the next uh, Motu tribute is slush head. 
That oh would, yes, uh, there you oh, go, yes. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh much. yeah, they have pretty much everything for that except uh, maybe the head. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that can be. Can you, know, you imagine? By the time they maybe have released different. aquatic yeah. heads, we we get yeah. something that works. Oh, fantastic! Right, uh, we're moving on to Jeremy Govier. Um, so last episode's Red Hellions. So. Jeremy's up to date with us. Being on Furious Four Bodies got me thinking. What are some of your favorite figures for customs? If I'm throwing paint on uh, it, it's a Tusk uh, Sentry or a DLX Goblin, um, and if I'm swapping and popping or popping and swapping, it's Novian Lean and Valak. So, well, Rich, you kind of answered it last week with your um, Red Hellions, but I'm sure you have more. Okay. Um, yes, um, the main one I've done randomly is, um, is Templars. So I've got like 20 odd Templars, um, despite, I mean, I've sold quite a few. Um, so that's, that's very much a go-to body for me. I, you know, I like the idea of different races and that sort of thing being in Templars. Um, it's the Legion builders though. It's the, the sort of cheaper way to do that. And then you can add some paint. The Sentry body, yeah. for instance, in Cosmic is a great one to go for. Um. Another one just specifically for armor is scaphoid. So yeah. yes, you're going to struggle with the green bones, but the purple cloth stuff and the, the sort of distressed gold armor is is brilliant. You can do all sorts of things with that. Yeah. Cool. Um, Matt, what you got? I've uh, mostly the cloth parts, shock horror. <laughs> uh, I love them. They're my favorite parts. Um, probably actually one of the things I seem to be I've, well, I've done it twice now, and which makes it the most thing I've done most. He's using a mix of the, um, is it the engineer, the the female one, and the goblin body, and it's yeah. actually really fun to you know work out out what to paint what, well, you know what you can tweak. It's uh, it's a fun little scale in uh, cosmic. So yeah, yeah that probably kind of that. It's kind of that okay scale, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I reckon dwarves would probably be the same. I just need to get the bravery up yeah. to lose a load of hit bits so I can swap out the uh, chain mail. <laughs> yeah. Right, for me, there's, I mean, there's been a few figures now in this build, but uh, Bardrick, uh, I think that's a great figure for using for customs, both pop and swap and using the parts for... Um, customs so you've got the cloth arms and legs so you can use them for a variety of different types of customs and um, you've got the chest part that is the pop-in chest you, you've got also just the awesome chest part on Bardrick you could paint that up a different way or you can pop it out and you can use maybe a third party uh, plug-in chest um, so that, that's always useful um, and then the cavern dwarf for dwarf uh, it's the most recent kind of legion builder dwarf we've got and it's got so many cool pieces so uh, that's the dwarf build i'd use for repaints um the sentry in cosmic boring but it really works you know or not boring but you know it's kind of just been said before um it works uh and naked tiger is just i've got four or five of them that i want to do customs with uh, I'm thinking of maybe just doing different colors on them, which would be just simple repaints, but why not? Because it hasn't been done yet in the line. I'm sure it will. Maybe not the colors I'll do them, but I'm sure they will recolor that body for different figures. So uh, that might be fun to do now. Well, I'm intrigued about the naked thigh guard. Did you pick him up on legionshub.com? I don't know. Maybe that was the tab Mallow. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> But what are you saying about Bardra, though, John? In, <laughs> yeah. in the same way, Valak. So very, obviously, very, very yeah. similar parts. We got that black yeah. base and the, the cool sort yeah. of torso. And I, I think, so the time has gone past maybe for these figures now, but Vortog was an absolute top, top tier for using for customs or pop and swaps. I've got a few the of best those torsos. Pork build. <laughs> and you got two sets of feet with him, the, the bare feet and the normal it was the first real figure with the chest, him and Magnus, that barrel of chest. Um, really good weathering on the weapons, so you could just use them with the with with another figure and, and kind of already instantly look cool. 
Um, and you got the fur, isn't he have little fur bits as well? Four tug, the little brown fur bits. Um, so he's excellent. You could also Xylernian guard because you've got the soft goods um, waste piece and the plastic waste piece. And it's just a cool build. The helmet, uh, I think a couple of places like I know Mark Calvo did uh, little inserts for that helmet. Um, so you, you, you could do that back then, but they're all kind of starting to go out of read or like Vorthog is gone for sure. He's higher on secondary and so learning guard probably will be at some stage. So, yeah, but also cool figures. Duban, you could say as well, is another great one. And he comes with a lot of hands, Duban. I think, I think with the Xylernian guard, the colour of the leather boots and gloves is really yeah. cool on that as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, back in the day, the Goblin Legion builder was was a good one for loads of stuff. Um, but I don't know. I don't like painting it. it it's too small, and I'm not as, as much into goblins. I like the. The figures we get from goblins, I think for the customs, I don't know whether it's me, I'm just out of ideas at the moment for goblin customs. Uh, other than, you know, painting, give me a three third party goblin head, uh, you know, the, with the cool sculpt, that's awesome to paint. I, w- I wonder if with the goblin builder pack, perhaps a few more options there might yes. help a bit with yeah, that. I think, it is I think very that's, limited. Yeah, I think that's a good refresh mm-hmm. for us. Right, we move on to Mark Gallus, Todd. Um, hey lads, which are your top third parties for weapons? So, Rich, seeing as you're the you're the expert on all the third party shops, guess what? My name give us said. a few, but also <laughs> leave. Or should or should we say first, and then you you go first? The weapons, Rich. Randomly, weapons. The one thing I didn't tend to buy that many of. Okay, third party. Oh, so I'm not an expert on this one. So I've got a few mal. So if you want to go first, shall I go first? Because I've barely got anything. Because yeah. I actually, I'm sorry, as I say this, but I, one, I'm rubbish at thinking about weapons when I'm ordering stuff. But two, I'm, I don't feel like there are that many really cool weapons out there. The one that I actually really like, and I bought a couple, and I've recently painted them, is Brian C. Because he does cosmic weapons and really cool cosmic weapons. Um. And I will be going by his booth to pick up any cosmic bits. I'm and sure there'll and be more and more as we come. Um, so that's yeah, main one. Wolf King does a few quite cool ones, I think. But they do, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's about it for me. So, um, so I had Toy Forge. Anthony does uh, great weapons, especially for dwarfs. Uh, lots of different types of weapons that you mightn't have gotten the line, especially, um, you know, before the uh, builder the two pack. And different types of, you know, different size shields, different uh, size axes, stuff like that, knives. Um, He also has a a lot of cool axes. Um, He also has some cosmic weapons, Anthony, um, that he's done in some of his customs. I think they've more come out this year, so maybe uh, we'll see them at Legion's Con. To be fair, yeah. yeah, We'll we'll kind of I'll probably uh, grab them at Legion's Con. Pick them up, yeah. Yeah. Um, planetary dog toys always had good weapons. Seb has, you know, he did a lot of bombastic big weapons. You know, that was my and problem. Also, with a couple of cool smaller ones. That is my problem with it. They they look great, but then I, yeah. I got them and they were like, oh, they're a bit bigger than I want them to be. Really, but I mean, yeah, obviously designed like that. But yeah, yeah, exactly. And and obviously the planetary dog uh, shields, you know, the wooden shields with the. Uh, plates on them the different logos and designs they're amazing and yeah they got like 20 paint. odd I think haven't they of those yeah. different designs and the ones with this the ram skull head and the chains uh, uh, love the them. anchor one is um, incredible yeah 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 but expensive for third parties like uh, I know Eugene is doing a load of them uh, again for Legion's Con but that's he has a Seba has a deal on if you buy loads so if you buy 20 or 30, you get them for a good price. But if you're buying like five or 10, it's it, it's expensive to turn any sort of money on it. You wouldn't be able to sell them for what you buy them for. Paint it, you know, at Legion's Con. So that's why I didn't get any more because I didn't want to do 30 or 40, you know, and 
glad that Eugene is looking after that part of the market if there if it's there hopefully um and the uh, I did also say Wolf King they do have a good variety and uh, definitely worth checking out um you'll find something you're looking for there and Uncle Jim's workshop was my last one I forgot about Uncle Jim yeah Uncle or, Jim's workshop is amazing yes brilliant stuff loads yeah. of different so again some of them might be a bit oversized for you Mal but um others aren't uh, and he has the ones with the flame effect as well I have a bunch of them that I need to finish actually um because I did one for a friend and I, I bought a bunch because I didn't want to ship just one sword um from China so I bought a bunch of them um and I did prime them all up but I haven't actually finished any of the rest of them so that's something on the pile for Legion's gone. Yeah, and if, so, if anyone's listening who's not a painter, then Uncle Jim sells everything they have. They sell painted as well. And they it's it's really good value. They'll like charge you like eight, nine dollars to do an amazing paint job on a, a really quite intricate sword or shield or whatever sort of thing. So well come to, come see me at Legion's Con first and, and then if <laughs> Oh absolutely <laughs> John. <laughs> Only if Legion's Con you still want something, go to oh. Uncle Jim. No, you I mean you Uncle Jim is you're right, John is a great one. Um, Plantry Dog Toys was the other one I'd mentioned. And the best one, unfortunately, you can't get them from anymore. And that was my actual customs. They had right. so many weapons, yeah. like so many, but obviously, you know, that's gone now. So. I wouldn't be surprised if a few more things come back that are probably Legions compatible, whilst not aimed at Legions, though. Yeah. Yeah. Righty ho. Um, next question. Uh, two questions from Ken Pool Collects, uh, who always puts a hello there on our YouTube every week. Um, I, I always read it in the Ewan McGregor Obi Wan voice. I assume that's what he's going for. <laughs> hello there. Yeah, ex- hey, there you go. I read it in your voice, Mal. Sorry. <laughs> um, so his first question is, "Hello there. How would you react to a new show on YouTube called?" Real American legions, and um, uh, yeah, you go. I've said I think Hulk Hogan probably isn't the best spokesman for legions. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this like the like the Real Housewives of like Hollywood or something like that? So there's like oh, there's maybe, a camera yeah. crew following around legions collectors, going like yes, or it's maybe it's about the GI Joe. Uh, Legion's land. Uh, it probably is, isn't it? I, I went real American because that was Hulk Hogan's theme tune. But I, I think what he's meaning is, you know, we're Euro Legions. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's uh, yeah. loads of real American Legions shows. That's my answer. There is loads of YouTube American uh, Legions shows with some wonderful American people. So, yeah. Uh, we, we would uh, say, real absolutely, Americans. yeah. <laughs> um, we're not chasing... <laughs> The likes on YouTube, although we're almost at 200. So, um, subscribe to YouTube exactly. Yeah, if you are watching me. this, like and subscribe, everybody. Yeah, and yeah. comment, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Smash the that like button. bell, yeah. it from somebody else. <laughs> hit the notification <laughs> bell. For <laughs> we, we, re- I regularly get these emails you now in the Eurolegions mailbox from these guys trying to sell uh, the key to the algorithm on YouTube. Because our videos aren't optimized. And I got mad and I replied to the last guy and I go, look, we're not, it's a niche topic. We can't, we can't play the algorithm game with this topic. You know, it's, yeah. it's there because if people want to watch the video, that's a great platform to host it. And if some new people find it from there, brilliant. But we can't chase the algorithm on YouTube. Yeah. It doesn't work for, for such a niche uh, subject. Um. And then he says, hello there, what would a Eurolegions three-pack figure from the Four Horsemen look like? And uh, I hate this question. I've said, <laughs> yeah, well, my answer is invisible, translucent, wouldn't yeah, be good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. A translucent yeah. dwarf. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we did a t-shirt this year with kind of, with, uh, with the okay from the Horsemen because some of the characters look a bit like uh, yeah. Legions. Um not like an official okay, like uh, Trevor no, Asprey's lunchbox, a, but with that, you know, okay. we don't mind <laughs> yeah. if you do that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you get the general idea, but uh, no, I, I wouldn't, I would say more than anything, I would cringe and feel like I don't deserve it. So um, I'm probably happy to, to 
truck along like this. It's worth it making it just to see the look of anguish on your face, John. <laughs> no, I, I would love them to do it just to see how big your head would get, Rich. <laughs> It may struggle to get through the doors into Legion's <laughs> Cup. But more so like at home, you know, as your wife and daughter just still think you're an idiot and <laughs> yeah. you're going around going, I've got an action figure named after me or, you know, whatever. And have 53 uh, different colour t-shirts all saying, look, here's yeah. a picture of the action figure made after me sort of thing. And you can tell us the tales of when you're in the office and t- telling people and, and <laughs> they just have different excuses to try and get away from yeah. you. <laughs> Right. Uh, that's our answer to that, I suppose. Uh, Ron Twining, um, <laughs> which gave us the weirdest question. Why doesn't Ronald Twining have a custom Spider-Man 2099 yet? Uh, I put because he didn't ask for one, <laughs> I've, you know, from I've Santa put, or from us. Or, I've yeah. put the answer to every question is because he hangs around with reprobates. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's out being in the a Viking in the forest too much. I haven't got time to pick up. I mean, it, it is a cool Spider-Man suit for sure, but uh, I can't see. I, I I've never been inspired with legions to do a Spider-Man custom because it's not it's, the aesthetic isn't really there. In terms it's where of we need the, the superhero skin. line. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. You know. Um, right, is Ramirez. Um, these are more for the first one or two, maybe for, for you, Rich. So pay attention here. Um, when we get to see the redemption arc for the Quetzalcoatl from the Hellion faction, when will we get to see it? Um, he definitely looks like a badass as a red Hellion, but eventually this god of knowledge and light will trend towards the good or at least neutral territory where he is neither good or evil. Sorry, is um, Quetzalcoatl in my universe is a, a proper bad guy uh, and will stay so. So, sorry, dude. Yeah, and that's the, that's the master of the Red Hellion lore, so what can you do? We've just lost a listener. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he drive us to uh, Jersey Mike's, we're good. <laughs> Anyone who can or, drive us. Oh, no, no, he, we it, walked with Jersey. He doesn't have a car there, no. We, need yeah, we, went to, we walked to Jersey Mike's with we his, need, yeah. We, we, need the, we need Noah for the car. Yeah. The truck. Um, the truck, yeah, exactly, yeah. He, he, he mightn't bring us this year because he's probably afraid you're going to steal it, Rich. <laughs> I mean, there's a decent chance, I'm not going to lie. I was very taken with that truck. <laughs> <laughs> Being a rather just, tall person as well, it kind of, it's perfect for you, you know. You'd be yeah, really it's just so big. I looked like I somebody think, put a doll next to a car when I had a picture taken next to it. I think I think now his with his newfound title of enabler, it's only right that he enables us to get food from Jersey Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or I want Kentucky Fried Chicken from Kentucky. Let's go. <laughs> 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 right. Anyway, <laughs> if, if in the miracle that we sold out our table by day one of Legion's Gone, you just go right. Let's go. Kentucky Fried Chicken in Kentucky. Um, and then, uh, when are we going to see the Maze Tech faction? I can't wait for that one. Are you going to disappoint them again here? Uh, possibly. I've written, I know, I know. Um, I've been talking about it for a long, long while. I've, I've got the various pieces. I just haven't put them together yet. Um, okay, so the, so the intention is there. The intention is absolutely there. I've got some amazing painted pieces from Nikki. Um, I've got the bodies to go with them. Um, I've got some of the bios written. It's just a case of getting my backside in gear and actually putting them all together. For us thickos, could you uh, briefly explain Maze Tech and what that's referring to? Yes. So it's uh, it's um, my sort of, and again, apologies if I get this wrong terminology, but the Mesoamerican sort of faction. So it's um, it's combina- the name is combination of the Mayans and the Aztecs. So Maze Techs. Um, and there's just some really cool third party prints out there, like Quetzalcoatl. Uh, um, of just like those traditional sort of outfits sort of thing. So I've got uh, like an undead one, a uh, Jaguar warrior, um, a couple of lizard men you'd be surprised to hear. Uh, Jaguar warrior is cool. <laughs> some, some conquistador style bad guys to go with them. So all the components are there. I just need to put it together. Take some photographs and get it out. Excellent. 
Excellent. Um, and then the last one with with a, I am trying to be smart word. Uh, what are your favorite ungulates and why are they sheep? So an, uh, I've put in here an ungulate is a hooved animal. So so that's that's why he's trying to catch us, take us out. It's a little bit um, rich. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. For being Welsh and they like being to, Welsh. Uh, yeah, they like to. Be we do like our sheep. Sheep. Yeah. Not like that, but we do like our sheep. Rich I put down no alpacas. I love alpacas. They're, I think they're cute. And they're cool. Alpaca. And they're not as. Amazing. And they're not as. Uh, they're not as big a nose as a llama. Llama is just a. You know. There's like to bite you and spit at you as yeah, a llama is yeah, as well. So. He's a nose, yeah. So yeah. alpaca is Although a, a cute llama. The alpacas are hogging the limelight now because you've got guanacos and vinacuna. Is it vinacuna? Vacunas in the same family. And you never see them. So Okay, now you're talking more ungulates stuff that I don't know. <laughs> what you got? What you got? Favourite hooved animal? So rich as sheep, Mal? Uh, no, mine's a tapir, just to clarify that. Oh, Ooh. that's a worm. <laughs> it's not a worm, that's a tapeworm. Oh, sorry. The tapir is a big, big animals with the long noses. Okay. Mal, horse? No? <sighs> not really. Hooved animals don't generally do it for me. I Go in, in, in any way. <laughs> Didn't need to be said. Didn't need to be said. <laughs> wow. Oh dear. Right, Are moving you down on. the shotty yeah. furry line. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. Um, I always uh, slag off Ma- Maverick uh, Salvagin for when they ask for questions and my wife's going to kill me, he gives 10. So he did on purposely use his const- uh, restraint and asked us just three. Um, I would have taken 10 because when it's for our show, I don't care. You know, the more, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the, more the merrier. <laughs> um, so Maverick asks, if you got to add slash remove slash modify something about Legion Scon, so he's trying to get us into trouble here. Yeah. What would it be? No judgment. Um, I've got one thing for this and yeah. it's not a, it's not a massive thing because actually it's the hotel again. It's that location of that hotel. That's the big thing for me. Um, I really like the hotel, though. though. It's a really nice hotel. So I need that hotel, but somewhere that's nearer to stuff so we could walk to stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's all I can think of. I don't even mind the distance it is from stuff. It's just that it's really difficult to walk anywhere from it because you're pretty much out onto a main street. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think we know enough oh, people with cars for the weekend uh, yeah, that we probably just, could get. But yeah, you, you're always then kind of, at that point, yeah, yeah. yeah, or just, you know, you don't want to be annoying people, you know, that's for sure. Um, I did have one which, it, it kind of goes into your point a bit earlier. Uh, now, I know this wouldn't be possible because of the hotel wouldn't want it for sure, but food trucks in the car park would be cool. Yeah. Yes, that'd be You excellent. know, with different types of, and, and like, oh, Obviously kind of good ones, you know, if you're going to have a, I don't know, a burger food truck, then make it an awesome burger. If you're going to have, you know, Mexican food, food truck, make it awesome. But the food in the, as Rich said, the food in the bar is great, but this would just give it a bit more variety of stuff um, and a bit more, you know, grabbing a snack in the middle of the day. Although they I, did have nice sandwiches and stuff there. So I'm yes. not, I'm not going hungry. Don't get me wrong. No, no, it's no. more just a kind of, you know, oh, yeah. I, we like food. I completely, we, we do, you can tell by looking at us all, can't you? Um, um, that, that, I will say, yeah, the, the food in that pub is really, really good. It's just, I look at the menu yeah. and of course, because it's Irish themed, you're looking at it going, well, they're trying to do versions of what I could get at home. <laughs> you know? And and you're like, I kind of, I'm in another country, even if it's a very similar country, I'd yeah. like some of the stuff I can't have at home. Yeah. 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 Rich? Yeah, so I had food trucks like you, John, um, but I totally oh, you did. Right. Wow, great that. minds. Great idea. Like, yeah. uh, I'd add a third day to Legion's Con if I'm being really greedy. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we've got so we've much, much to got do. a four day Legion's Con this year. <laughs> and yeah, actually, want... the, con, the con itself rather than G Con. And I just think it would the, and that sort of the stuff. last day then it would do something to the other days if there was a third Maybe. day. Maybe it would give me more time to buy stuff though. <laughs> you don't need important. to need any more, do you? <laughs> no, I don't really don't know. How much? Um, you and then rich? five thousand pounds. <laughs> it was about ten pence, I think, last time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I definitely didn't have you two planning an intervention every time I left. 
<laughs> and then the Coming re-packing back with the stuff bag in like yeah, bubble wrap, too. you know, yeah. two hands full of bubble wrap every time you left the table. Coming back, I was like, "Oh, you packing stuff? No, <laughs> there's stuff in here." Uh, and bigger tables, and that's probably just because we share a table. But bigger tables. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, the good. way we're set up this year might yeah, we'll hopefully solve that. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Yep. Um. Right. Uh. Opinion on each faction having a unique mount. So I just said that I absolutely love that uh, whole idea and that yeah, it same. would be unique. So we've got horses, obviously, in some of the factions. Uh, Mal, have you gone any further than that? No, I literally Rich, uh, has gone further. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it to Rich. But uh, I think it'd be a great idea. We've got a bear, obviously, now. And I mean, there's, yeah, yeah great idea. Rich. Right, Rich. Uh, outstanding I idea, if, Mav. I don't know if these are in the order you've... You it's right, them, any order. They are. Yeah. Um, so for the um, Lithia, I'd want some really big, heavy armoured lizard, obviously, because it's lizards. But something that the skin's so thick that the vampires can't bite through them. But they've trained them to, to ride them. So there's a couple of Warhammer examples, for instance, on the left here. Yeah. Um, claws, teeth, heavy armour, that'd be great. Uh, on the right hand side, um, the army of Leodiceus, Leodiceus with a manticore. Um, so you've got your lion with wings and a scorpion's tail. I mean, that would be, just be a badass thing. Can you imagine a load of red shields flying down into battle on those? That would be that would be great. Cool. Uh, right next, we have uh, a griffin for the Order of Ethron. It's an obvious one, but again, I think that would be a boring. really cool. Boring. <laughs> boring yeah. Oh no, I yeah. like a griffin. I just said that because of the ether on thing. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Uh, on the right of the screen is a skeletal scorpion, and that would be for the congregation of Necronominus. A scorpion. So these giant would be awesome. Yeah, it's like these giant, you know, Jason yeah, the Argonaut type thing. No bother that, there. I mean, there could be a little bit of cost, but you know, um, yeah. So that would be absolutely awesome. Uh, if you take us on, John. Yep, uh, we got. Uh, oh, yeah. So a. Ju- a giant centipede for the circle of poxus, um, with loads of like posh, posh jewels and that sort of thing coming off it. So it's like it almost looks like it's rotting, but with a cool saddle on it for them to ride into battle. I would very much like that. And then the one on the right, and this this is an actual character from something I can't remember what it is, but it's it's like a demon mount type thing for um for the Legion of Arathir. So it's again, nice. sort of like you know. It looks a bit like a displacer beast, but less jagged. Yeah, it's 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 definitely linked to something, but it's got like it's got like, almost like dreads, like the the mm. hunter dog things from the Predators film. Um, but then it's got like the tendrils coming out when they they open bits like that, and these huge horns and who you know that sort of thing. So yeah, that for cool. the uh, the Legion of Arathir. Um the other ones are a bit more boring. So Xylona would be a stag. I know we've got a moose, but a really cool stag would be would be awesome for that. Um, House of the Noble Bear would be woolly mammoth if we're going to have something for the House of the Noble Bear. That'd be, can you imagine? I mean, that'd be huge. huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or maybe we a woolly rhino. Already. If you don't want to do if you don't do a mammoth because it's too big, maybe a woolly rhino. That'd be cool. Might be a way to go. Yeah. Uh, Sons of the Red Star would be a large eagle to whisk him away after an assassination. Then hop on the back of that and off they go. How about a giant vulture? <laughs> oh, vult! Yes, yeah, yeah. That's better, Mal. That would be good. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that's all of them. Basilia, oh no, and Basilia, Basilia would be a giant snake. Don't forget my faction. Of course it would. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that'd be very cool. Right. Uh, then Maverick says, besides money, what is the biggest hurdle stopping someone doing a Euro Legions con? If there seems to be a good number of European centric mythic cosmic collectors. Is it limited spaces, distance between cities, countries, time frame, etc.? I think it's a, it's all of that. A yeah, lack yeah. of interest in attendees, I think. One, because the draw would be the horsemen. Like, so if the likes of us were yeah. to organize one, they, they'd be like, who are those guys? You know? Yeah. Even though they know who we are, but like, you know, if we were to be at a show, we should be just part of it, not the main event for sure. Um, I think there is, like countries, you know, Although we're kind of geographically close compared to, say, some people so in the States. from country to country, it's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's more difficult to get around yeah. here. Um, yeah, people are, I don't know if people are as into it. When you think of it, like, so you get a couple of hundred 
however many you get allegiance gone is probably a very small amount of the whole community and the community is much smaller over here so a very small amount of the community starts to be like five to ten to twenty yeah. people i think realistically that, that would f- go yeah that first year you'd have to have a very small event yeah with not a lot there it's more of a meeting a meet up and then how are you even going to get people interested yeah what to because it would be quite a chunk of money even traveling within the uk yeah. for an evening or a, a day you know it, it's going to be a lot of time and money but not as much as we're spending to go to uh legions con but comparatively for what they would be going to and i think that's the that's yeah. the bit it's the getting it off the ground with a smaller yeah. event because it's, it's hard yeah, for, I think you'd have to grow the you'd have to grow the market. I mean, you'd need like a street yeah. team event or something at one of the big UK comic but, cons yeah, but where people still, who've never you know, who've never seen Legion's figures was going to go, "Whoa, what the hell are they? That's amazing!" But again, yeah, but, that's not going to happen because of all the stock. But, you know, yeah, people, exactly. you still won't see the horsemen. You still won't meet some of the big people in the community. You know, you'll yeah. just meet some of the more local people, and you know, we you'd spend more going to Legion's con, but you get to see everything and everybody. And in the end, it'll be more worth it. So I'd say it's probably more likely here to be the likes of, like, say, the three of us. We'll visit each other or something or, you know, uh, and if we happen to incorporate one or two more people into that, it would be more something like that. that well, you would do. Yeah, that was the other thing. Even if you had like a um, a small event. Yeah. What 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 are you going to draw people to that with? Because yeah. you know who's getting stock from the horsemen to sell like they do with the street teams. It's going to be so hard to organise. No, oh, you'd have to use the because, retailer, I suppose. Yeah, and you know. getting them yeah. interested in for maybe Mighty Underground yeah. or someone like that might because they're more yeah in the community. But even it's a quite a big thing for them. Yeah, as but well, a lot of them are online retailers, so then yeah. they don't have you know. Yeah. That's set up even for a street team. So they might not even have uh, the possibility to have a credit card machine, you know, know? (laughs) which is, uh, it seems like a simple thing, but yeah. But yeah, so we've tried to maybe put feelers out, never arranged anything formally in the last years, but it's been like what, like if you look at the groups over here, the UK group, it's mostly a buying and selling type of thing uh, or people trying to figure out how to use AliExpress, you know, <laughs> and in the European one. Um, or is it worth buying from the horsemen's the other question a lot? Yeah. In the European one, it's, uh, yeah, it's some people kind of sharing their photography, it's a bit of buying and selling, um, and maybe sharing some other stuff uh, from around the community, but it isn't, there isn't a huge amount of engagement. Some of that might be language barrier. Uh, some of it might be just people not, you know, using Facebook as much over here. I don't know. There could be an element of that. Yeah. For sure. The language barrier is absolutely something to be conscious of. Even if people want to meet up, you know, if someone's English is really bad and, you know, everything other than English is bad for me, then that makes it really quite difficult to travel over to, say, Germany or somewhere. And then, yeah. you know, you don't speak German. So they're like, how do you, you know, how do you engage like, people? Like where side? I live, for example, okay, it's a bit of a unique country, but like if I don't know the person, I don't know what language they speak. It's not, it's not obvious. Like I know the people in my village, but if I go to the next village and see someone, if I start in a language, it might not be any of the languages they speak. That's just kind of what Europe is like a little bit, you know. Now, usually English can be okay, but then if they're not great at English, it's it's just it's just a weird balance of the conversation, you know. It's not, yeah, it it it, it doesn't work, you know. So, anyway, but yeah, it's it's just a thing, you know. I think there are in in general. I think you've said it before, Mal. There are less uh, kind of Comic Con events here, you know. And if they are, they're just really big ones, you know, like UK Comic Con well, yeah. or Warhammer Con. I mean, there are really a, there are things. a lot of small ones in the UK, but you're not going to get yeah. people spending easily a hundred plus pounds 
to spend an yeah. evening or a day at one of them just to do a mythic yeah. thing at the end of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's one, there's one big kind of comic convention here, and it's in a, it's in a town. Like, so they take over the whole town every July. But it's, it's mostly comic. There is like lots of uh, figures and stuff like that, and you know, arts and crafts, and but it's mostly a comic thing. And then most of the comics are in French. So, you know, yeah, I've been to it once or twice, but it's not that interesting. I would say, and also the stuff is then the figures are way overpriced if you if you're in the know you know so. yeah well, that's, yeah perhaps the other issue is the cost of yeah. <laughs> yeah. figures over here compared to the us in a way yeah or at least the the selection yeah yeah right um i was gonna say let's try and kind of uh pick it up uh, a bit in the mood here but uh what do you predict will it from tom cole's <laughs> What do you predict will happen at the end of the Mythic Legions line? <laughs> It'll never end. <laughs> um, for example, will it continue in some form? Will the value of the figures increase or decrease? Will there be another line with compatible parts other than the other two figure beer, obscure cosmic? Um, what are we to do with the endless trace of little straps, plastic pauldrons? And <laughs> <way they're back? laughs> Same thing you do with all from the them. people Stick them on eBay it's a problem for, a for my loss. kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I've said I suspect it'll stop if the horsemen decide they don't want to do it or it just isn't financially viable anymore and yeah. and it won't carry on if that's the case <laughs> you know, that'll be it it'll just yeah. fritter away like a lot of lines do but I hope it goes on for years and years and years and years to yeah. come yeah, and I think we've got years that happens. left of it yeah. yeah we've got years at least five years left in it yeah Oh yeah, at least that, yeah. Um, I think that it will continue anyway in some form because the customizing community is now so big that like, you know, if the horseman just decided to, to stop, someone would take on the the IP and the, you know, the build system, you know, make the connections just out of the community almost, you know. I must, I'm not even from that perspective. I actually think but we'd have to ask them and they might not want to share this information. I don't know why, but it might be something they don't want to be to. I do feel like part of what they're trying to build at the studio is con continuity. Yeah. And bringing not? younger people in, no offence to them, that will be able to continue it as they go. Because if you notice, they're bringing in interns and trying to get younger people into the studio yeah. and interested. Diego is a good example of I assume he's yeah. a, bit, a fair bit younger than us, but uh, um, but they've had other interns that are a lot younger, haven't they? Yeah, for sure. And even, you know, uh, people don't retire in the States, as far as I can see, in these type of inter industries. if they, You know, if they love their job, they don't tend to retire. Obviously, if, you know, you're maybe a civil servant and you've done your x amount of years to get your pension and then you can go off and do something you want but uh you know if you if you are in a job like this that you might wind down your hours or that you know but you like i think for example eric treadway i think he'd always be involved in it one way or another and as long as eric is involved in it um, i think it will continue in one some shape or form and of course um, we they own the company so yeah <laughs> unless they sell it to someone else <laughs> right on the home straight now two left uh, Trevor Williams uh, in maybe some sort of a hint question maybe not uh, what are your thoughts slash predictions for upcoming figure obscure releases so there is a plural there um, I think personally the next one will be the Jersey Devil I just think it's the time to do it and I think that they might just do it this weekend, maybe. Got to put my. I'm, I'm with you. I have a sneak, thing. and I think Kevin M. Boots posted his sort of brain just going on uh, that he thought we might hear something this yeah. weekend. And I'm, I'm, I, yeah, feels like a good weekend for it. I've got no idea what they'll do, yeah. though. Yeah. I know what I think the next one. heavy gunner until October. So. Yeah. That's, that's what's 
Yeah. No, unless is, it too, is it too early for a Halloween one? That's the question, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Like, or unless the heavy gunner shipment was on a delayed shipment with the figure obscura figure that we might get, and then oh, oh. That, then it might be both. So who knows? Mm. That could also be. But uh, yeah, I think the Jersey Devil. We we had a recent episode with a lot of other um, predictions that we thought, mm. but I think that one. I think uh, in terms of the Christmas style release I think we'll get another Christmas Carol yeah, same. character same. and we might get another oh. Monkey King character coming yeah I think yeah. that'll be the next one then yeah I'm, I, my first guess was Pigsy from the Monkey King but then we are so close to Halloween now that I'm thinking maybe maybe they'll go on a Halloween one and maybe they might do something like the Mummy um, because obviously they, you know they've got the Egyptian Subline going now as well, so that could be a good time to introduce that sort of horror character. That's yeah, that's oh, yeah. a good shaft. And then, of course, we got the other Egyptian gods, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but and and then the hint at maybe possibly that female character from the looked like maybe a Mary Poppins type character. I don't know if that's it, uh, funnily enough, that's what came to my mind when I saw it was Mary Poppins, but yeah. maybe, maybe we will get Mary Poppins. I don't know if she's. But she's probably yeah. owned by Disney, isn't she? So they can't. That'll save, my, that'll save my wallet quite a bit of money. So, right uh, to wind us out here, then uh, Kieran Edmund popped a question on our Discord today. Um, just in time, Kieran. So, do you think that the Mythics will continue the versus waves, though so not con- not not like the previous version, continue full stop, but continue the versus waves at GCon, and then? For the reuse slash, you know, the like the Ashes of Eggbender wave, we get a story driven Ashes of Eggbender wave. Uh, and then he says, personally, I like the fact that we can fill out the factions doing the versus waves and then get a variety of factions and races in the mid-year drops. It would also mean that Arthur would be soon. I think we've we did an episode on what we might like next from Arthur. So if you haven't listened to that, go back and have a listen if you're interested in Arthur. So, what do you think, Mal? No, I think we're going to get something different from this point on. I think uh, they've done the versus waves to fill out the various factions. We've now got... Arathir is probably still the biggest faction, but we've got roughly similar figures, which is part of the reason I hope we don't get versus, because I don't want more Arathir just yet. (laughs) Um, But I think we've got um, roughly similar amounts of figures for most of the factions. Maybe a couple are still a bit short. But that's why I don't think we'll get the verses. I think they'll try and fill out some of the spots that are a bit thin. Um, I definitely think we're going to start to see more. And I think that's what kind of Jeremy was trying to get at with the Ashes of Agbendor and this idea that we're going to start getting stories. Um, I think that's going to be the All-Star slash reinforcements waves moving forward. Not reinforcements, the All-Stars waves moving forward are going to be that, I think. Yeah, I agree, Mal. I think I think the mid-year waves will be lots of reuse like this year, but it's a good way to fill out the current factions. You know, you can have a knight with just a, a head that they've tooled for something else sort of thing. You can just drop it in there. So basically what they did this time in terms of that, you know, you can go through the Second Great War, you can bring up, you know, chance for version twos, all that sort of stuff. But G-Con, no, I, I agree. I don't think they'll go down the versus waves. I certainly desperately hope they don't start Arathir and... Um, the Legion again. It's like, no, we've had five years of that. It's been amazing, but let's do something different. Now is the time to spread their wings and introduce lizard men. Where <laughs> all that sort of thing. Uh, and I was thinking about Where's this the actually, outro probably, probably in too much depth. Um, and it's like, um, maybe, and this is yeah, craziness that the second war was so cataclysmic that it somehow shifted the continents and another continent has suddenly drifted a lot closer to Mythos than it was. Oh, Nate, get your your pencils out. You need to draw a new map. Which is where all these new races and species and types of characters come from because all of a sudden they're so close that they can get involved in in what's going on Mythos. And it might even then drive the remaining factions of Mythos to band together even some evil characters to then fight the new guys. So there's all that sort of storyline you can go down. Yeah. Well, my answer is I don't think they will as well uh, as you boys. And I think that they will introduce new factions at GCon uh, and they'll be related to Mythos after 
the Ashes of Agbendor story. So the new Legions uh, Rise of the Lizard Men. You hear it here first. <laughs> well, my my back of my mind. Oh, he's doing the outro. I should say this quick. Back of my mind. Do I wonder if we're going to get not a dragon, but that uh, dragon clan at Legions Con. John, you better stay safe from all those dragons, though. Don't shag sheep. Do I need to bleep the word shag, or...? Is that, <laughs> it's not going to sound good in the outro. No, I don't think so. Uh, people I think that's the safe word. Shack. This probably won't mean anything oh, to the Americans anyway. Oh! <laughs> no, I can't. No, I can't leave this in the uh, as an outtake or a <laughs> credit scene. <laughs> or can I? Yeah, I'm sure they were. <laughs> that it was. Nobody a, listens this long anyway. No, it is is a laugh, and that's all it was. <laughs> if he listens. <laughs>